Okay, good morning, everybody. Uh, so today uh, we are here for a webinar today um, on how to help community businesses trade online. Um, and we'll be here for about, uh, about an hour or so from now. Um, and we're here today to hear from Carlos Saba from the Happy Startup School, who will be talking through uh, how community businesses can use the tech tools in a simple, easy, uh, hopefully cheap, a uh, time efficient way to help them start trading online, but particularly to do that in the context of how they can connect with their audiences um, so that the tech tools are most effective. Uh, so Carlos, I'm just gonna hand over to you um, and just remind that we will be able to take questions at the end. So thanks very much. Brilliant, thank you very much, Lucy. Right, I am going to um, start my slides and then see if I can get them on screen for you. Sorry, we're having a bit of a tech issue here. Ah, oh, there we go. Uh, ah. This isn't a good look when your machine doesn't do what it's wanting to do and you're trying to share how to use tech. Sorry. Right. Okay. I think we're there. Uh, boom. Oh. Well, um, some of you wanted to feel confident. <laughs> that wasn't the best confident start. So let me start from the beginning. So yes. Um, the brief that um, I'm working to is, is kind of helping you get your community businesses trading online. Like Lucy said, I'm the co-founder of the Happy Startup School. Um, we're a community of entrepreneurs, freelancers, founders, change makers who want to build businesses that align with who they really are. And so there's this idea of um, creating effortless impact. How can you make impact in the world by just being yourself? And doing stuff that you love uh, and how can you make money do good and be happy because i think one of the most important things around building a business that's going to create impact is not only the financial sustainability of it but also your energetic sustainability if you end up burning out because you're trying to do so much work and feel like everything is on your shoulders and you need to do a hundred things a day then there's a likelihood that you won't make the impact that you really want to make and that's why for us, community is such a big part of this, because community isn't just about one person gathering lots of people and, and looking after them. A community is about a group of people who believe in the same things and want to create the same impact in the world working together. And as a community leader, my, my thoughts or my opinion of what a community leader is really about is how do you help others help each other? And your job is really to to create that space for collaboration, connection, and creation. So um, to begin with, I just wanna, this is the this is the slide that you um, essentially wanna take a screen grab on because it's gonna be the, the thing that I'm gonna really focus on or the, the, the principles that I'm gonna be focusing on. I'm gonna share some ideas of tools that you can use, but really I think the most important thing for me is un, embedding some principles around what it means to build a business online and what it means to um, to make decisions about what's in and what's out. Uh, and there's so many different ways that you can do this, so many different tools that you can use. And I'm going to only show you probably like a, a small smidgen of what, what's possible. Um, but this is going to be based on my experience with working with a lot of um, early stage or first time entrepreneurs, people getting ideas out for the first time people building businesses for the first time so these are entry level tools that i hope you'll be able to pick up and use in one way or the other but like i said the most important thing here are really the principles the the real the things that are going to guide how you do stuff and why you do it not necessarily what you use and so the three things that i'm going to be talking about here are before building a shop think about how you build community how do you build connection because um, the challenge that I see with a lot of people trying to sell things online is they go from showing something 
to someone or meeting a customer or potential customer for the, for, the, for the first time and then trying to sell them something. It's like the ad based approach is like, I've got a widget and I'm just going to try and put it in front of as many faces as possible, hoping someone will buy it. It's percentages based. And the thing about ads that I hope some of you will appreciate is ads cost money. And what ends up happening, whether they're Facebook ads or Google ads, you either pour a whole load of money down down the ad vein for very little return. So you actually may be, start making a loss or you don't pour enough money to actually make any uh, build up any awareness and you don't make any income at all. So you're still making a loss. So the principle here is particularly if you're starting off with anything online is how can you start taking people on a journey of getting to know what you do, why you do it, why it's important and why they should care. And when you're selling things, really understanding that people buy from people most of the time and people invest their time and energy in things they care about and things they trust and people they trust so taking them people on a journey of from knowing about you to trusting you and then to loving your work is one way of really building a sustainable online business or any business to be honest but if we're thinking online more so because you're not able to get in front of them face to face most of the time then the other thing to think about is to sell something different and differently. So if you're not used to selling things online, um, you might think that the only things you sell on, well, the thing that you might spring to mind straight away is, is something like Amazon, a shop like that, where it's just stuff. Um, the thing I'd like to share with you and maybe um, inspire you to think about is Many of you have a lot of knowledge and experience that could be valuable to other people. And if it's valuable to other people, then either people will invest time and or money to acquire that knowledge. And so to think of that as a way of generating revenue for your business. And even if you're, uh, as I saw, I think something around uh, community gardens, if I'm correct, I'm sorry if I didn't make, see that or read that correctly. But even if it's something that you think is much more, is actually, we create edible gardens. So even if, if you feel that's something that's very much based in uh, in real life and you need to be face to face and you need to be in the real world doing stuff to actually create value, there's probably a lot of knowledge and experience and understanding that you can share in very easy ways. That is a value that can either generate interest and uh, love for the work that you do. Or it could actually even generate revenue if it's stuff that people will help people actually solve a problem and do something better or even feel better. So that's something I wanted to just um, leave you with or, or have you take away is to sell something different and differently. And the other thing, when I think about something differently, it isn't just I have a shop, pay it, pay for something, take it away and use it. It's like, how can you... Um, sell your expertise through something like zoom or through a podcast or some audio or uh, an online course even you know some of you might think oh, i can't do an online course on something i you know uh, my experience but actually there are very easy ways to share your knowledge that doesn't entail you having to tell every single person who wants you can package it up in a way that people can just use, access it whenever they want and to think about that access as value, to be able to not get lost in the sea of YouTube and Google trying to search for the thing that you want. But no, these people are experts or really love what they do. I really appreciate what they know and their knowledge. And I can access their wisdom on their online course anytime I want. So thinking about that value and the outcomes that you create that are of value that people would wish to pay for. And finally, I think the thing that's really um, people forget about, uh, particularly when they're thinking about building stuff online um, and how to attract attention, is they feel like they need to to have this sheen of I know it all and I'm great and I'm amazing and and look at my amazing project and my amazing products. Um, those aren't authentic stories, and they don't inspire and they don't connect. And so the final thing that I really wanted to share with you all is how can you share and tell stories 
that inspire and connect because that's the basis of any marketing uh, any community building it's about how do you get people to believe you to feel like they're connected to you they they are essentially like you and then motivate them to do something with that knowledge and knowing that they're not alone and there's this um framework or this approach called uh, public narrative that i really um really value and and i learned from uh, a marketeer guru called seth godin i don't know if any of you've heard of him but he talks about these three principles of story of self story of us and story of now and so that's something that i'll be diving into later so um hopefully you've taken a snapshot of that image and something that you can uh, take with a take away with you just to help you remember what we're talk- going to be talking about today but um what i'm going to be going through are these three things building community before building a shop sell something differently and tell stories that inspire and connect so building community before building a shop um like i said at the beginning um people buy from people and people buy from people they trust and people value um brands projects communities um they 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 value the ones more are the are the ones that they love are the ones they value most the ones that they have a really strong connection and the thing to bear in mind is that um may many people might not know about your project and may might not even have the knowledge and understand the passion that you have for the work that you're doing and so you to think about anyone that you meet needs to go on a journey from knowing what you do liking what you do trusting you your project and um the things that you're doing and then loving it and that you very the the quicker that you can get them down this path the better but accepting that they still have to go down this path you know rarely uh, is someone just going to jump straight into bed with you and say yes i love you this is amazing it's like they, there's there's something wrong with their their boundaries there <laughs> but there's a there's a process of learning more about you and it's a journey and that's what i'd like to make sure that you you come away understanding and using as a principle because um if you think of uh this circle here um the outside of this circle is probably the rest of the world most of the world don't know what you do and so you're going to take them on a journey of going from knowledge to liking to trusting and then to loving and the reason why i've put it this way because i like this idea of circles of connection um to think about the people closest to you are the people who are going to love your work most and the people who trust you are going to be closer to you than the ones who just know about you and it's really when you're thinking about finding people to engage invest buy from you the people who are most likely to do that will the be the people in your trust and love circles um so i think the mistake a lot of people make when they're trying to sell something online is they they think oh you know if i get onto facebook and they've got a billion odd users and i only get 1% of that then wow imagine how many people that is the trouble is is that um your message is going to be so dilute it's going to be so thin and then the people who connect with you won't have a real clear idea why they're there because it'll be so broad in terms of the message that you're putting out there that there'll be no no connection and so the thing i'd like you to focus on is building something that a small amount of people love because when you can focus on that small number of people and bringing them together and really have a clear idea of what motivates them what drives them how their values align with yours how your mission aligns with what they want to see in the world and being able to like have that as a focus for all of your work and storytelling and the way you present yourself a you have a lot less to think about because you're much more focused and you know what to say yes or no to in terms of 
the the messages you want to um, share and the and also in terms of the people you want to connect with you know it becomes less about spotting market opportunities and potential collaborations based on just skills and opportunity but more about do i really resonate with this person and do these people really get what i'm trying to do because those are the people particularly at the beginning whether you're just launching a project or launching a business online those as we call them in the startup world early adopters those people who really get you even though they don't understand exactly everything that you do but they really love what you do those are the people to try and gather around you and to try and focus on and then to try to connect to each other and that's why i think community is so important it's like when you connect these people together they get value from being connected and they want to stay connected and they want to help each other and then they want to help you and then you create this space of co-creation where ideas are um, not only generated by you but also generated by community and they will want to step forward and they want to help because they don't necessarily want something from you they will get something from this sense of contribution from this sense of aligning to your mission and actually doing something meaningful in the world and i, I think that's an opportunity for any community-based business any purpose-led business is that there is a clamoring for meaning in this world we're so driven and so being uh, conditioned by commercialism and globalization and the need to have more that we've also lost uh, our basically lost touch with what's important and i i believe more purpose-driven organizations that are able to tell their story and connect people are going to be in more demand because people are going to want to feel that sense of meaning and purpose and will value contributing to that and for those of you who haven't heard of them you know one of the organizations and initiatives that i believe is kind of encapsulating this trend is good for nothing um before covid bc as i like to say um they used to run uh, physical get-togethers where uh, marketers developers prefer you know per, a, prof creative professionals would get together to use their knowledge and skills to work on a social enterprises problem because there was a demand there to really use that um use their superpowers to do something good in the world and and that's I think a real opportunity for everyone here to see that there is there are lots of people who would love to help you and what's missing is just an invitation to do that and when it comes to community i think these are the four things i would um see as kind of fundamental firstly values what are the values that are really um important to you what are your core values and a lot of people get lost in what are the core values of the organization and try and then go into some exercise of trying to define that i would start with you you know um and we'll talk about this later on but as as the driving force behind your organization your values are the ones that are going to permeate everything that happens because you're the source of the energy and so if you understand what those core values are and are able to articulate them share them and live them then you will attract the right people the other thing that's really important with any kind of community or gathering of people that you want to keep connected is the idea of rituals um this is uh more on in terms of when you are um when you have a community together and you want to keep them in touch with each other but having a regular pace of activities things that you do that bring people together and give them a place to connect and contribute or even just say that they're there uh, for instance within our happy startup community we have a, a try and do a regular friday reflection just people to share how their week went just as a way to keep regular contact and to know that other people are out there and that ritual is like an anchor particularly in these times of uncertainty having these regular rituals that keep you anchored to the ground while everything else around you is just spinning into chaos so it's, it's valuable it's important and, and i think as a as a community business and as a community leader it's going to be a tool that's really going to help you um, gather people around you and connection is is obvious but it's it's something that again people don't haven't realized the value of it until we've had to be disconnected 
in this world that we're in where we're having to social distance we're having to work from home we're not allowed to gather in large numbers anymore um how you can create that sense of connection uh, even if it's virtual and there's a lot of people may say yeah there's nothing replaces the real world experience no there isn't but i don't know if um, some of you've had this but you can have a conversation on a video call that can be really connecting and valuable and it isn't about how how well you can see the person or um how big the screen is or um it's really about how vulnerable are you in that conversation how can you feel like that person is hearing you and seeing you and that person is aligned and, and is connected with what you're doing and so there's connection in terms of using technologies to bring people together but connection in terms of showing that you're there this is what you believe in and having people gather around you so that they can feel that they're part of something and the final thing i think a lot of people uh, particularly uh, people in our community um, trying to build community or trying to to start something new they forget about is that people value the ability to contribute and the the thing that people find it hard most hard to do is to ask for help in terms of as a founder as a leader of a community or a community business um, if you're able to clearly and vulnerably ask for help and ask for help in a very uh, in a specific way so people can really engage and 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 use their skills experience or just their energy and time to to move your business forward then it's going to be uh, it's going to be valuable to them as well as valuable to you i think is what i'm trying to say so think about those four things values rituals connection and contribution when you're thinking about um, starting your business online how can you start embedding these ideas in terms of gathering people um, to learn about what you're doing and to contribute and help you shape what you're trying to do and i'm just going to go through a few of the tools that uh, you can use to do that an obvious one is a facebook group um, most people are on facebook and so and it's free and it's cheap and a lot of the times well this is going to be a bit of a theme with this of the, my talk today is like a lot of these tech technologies there are lots of different alternatives but the principles are always the same give people a reason to gather give people rituals that allow them to connect on the regular way um, and give people a, an ability to contribute an ability to share their skills their knowledge and their stories and so yeah with a facebook group I, i'm not going to go into the details of how to set one up but I would say ideally you could start uh, you can start them up as private groups and you can set them up with a little questionnaire to um, essentially uh, allow you to control who joins the community because the, another thing that I'd like to um, share as in my experience of community building is one of the key things around creating online communities that helps is creating a safe space one of the challenges you know even in a space like this where we have uh, a chat uh, facility it it can sometimes feel a bit daunting just to share something here because you don't know anyone and you don't know if it's a safe space it hasn't been curated um thankfully because you're part of the school of social entrepreneurs you kind of know that the people here are people like you and you know there is engagement here take that similar principle with your facebook group uh, or whatever product you're going to use to build community think about how you would feel if you're stepping into a room of strangers how can you make people feel welcome feel connected feel safe uh, and that is part of the hosting that is part about telling vulnerable stories about your journey as the community leader and i'll talk more about stories later but yes facebook groups very simple very easy things to use to to start gathering people but it doesn't have to be something like facebook and something that complicated you could use um something like whatsapp and while people don't necessarily think of whatsapp in this way you know some people just think of it as another sms messaging tool uh, a way to keep connected with your family it's also a simple way to build community a close-knit community um quickly uh it's a, you just create a small group and similarly, the principles are the same. Give a reason for the group. 
you know, uh, you know what are the values about this group you know what are, what are the values that you want to instill into this group why are people connected to this group what are the rituals that you create in this group to connect people on a regular basis the thing about whatsapp a lot of the time is it can feel really noisy and you know i even for myself as you can see you can come back to your whatsapp and suddenly there's 30 40 70 80 messages unwritten un, uh read messages and that can create anxiety but if you can create a ritual where people can check in and say, all right, at least on a Monday, I'm going to check in and see how people are doing. Or on a Friday, I'm going to check in and share what's going on with me. That gives people a structure to know that, okay, I can manage this around the rest of my life. And having a, a private WhatsApp group, it's easy to access. It feels safer because you know exactly who's in the room. And, and you can start having people ask for help and offer their um, offer their skills, offer their time in a very easy way with people that they know, that, that they know they're there. If you want to step up a gear and you've um, maybe used WhatsApp or you're used Facebook and you already have a community, um, one of the th tools that we use now is a tool called Mighty Networks. We used to run um, a lot of our programs on Facebook, but the challenge we found is that Facebook can get very distracting. And also some people are really against Facebook because of the idea of privacy and um, owning your data. And so to overcome uh, some of that resistance and also primarily to just have a focus, you know, not get distracted by lots of other people's pictures of foods, cats, pets, whatever it is that's throwing through your feed, we decided to use um, a closed community platform uh, in order to create a uh, much stronger sense of safety, but also that we could tailor all the content and focus the conversations on um, the mission that we were on and the things that we wanted to talk about. Uh, and so I would, if you're new to community building and you're new to building a business online, this isn't the first thing that I would look at, but this I share this with you as a picture of possibility of things that you, a thing that you could get to where you can actually uh, have your own private community and get people sharing and connecting and, and, and learning from each other. Okay. Oh, I just wanted to mention, yes, yeah, Sally just didn't realize you can get WhatsApp on your computer. Yes, you can. And it's a godsend for me to be able to have that on my laptop rather than trying to type into a phone, particularly when you have many groups that you're managing. Right. So the next section I wanted to talk about is this idea of selling something differently. Um, when um, people, like I said, when people think about um, going online and selling, they think purely about selling products. Uh, and I will talk a bit about selling products easily online. Um, the, the big thing around um, investing in, uh, a shop online or having an offering that uh, you're selling online is to try and minimize the amount of money and time you spend on something before you actually know people want it. This is the, the biggest risk that um, any entrepreneur, social enterprise will face when they're trying to um, generate revenue is building something or trying to sell something people don't want or understand. And that's why it was so important for me to stress this idea of this journey of a customer at the beginning. It's not only a journey of trust, of being emotionally connected to your work. It's also a journey of education, of knowledge, of understanding what you do, what you offer, how you can help them and why it's important. And so um, in terms of the things that you can sell online, you can sell knowledge. Uh, so just to be mindful of all the things that you know how to do that other people might not know how to do as well as you and how you can fast track their ability to do to achieve things in their lives just by sharing that knowledge in a way that's engaging and useful and that could be through um, your time and just telling them how to do it and talking them through it or through creating content and so when I think about content maybe people just think about um, blog posts or YouTube videos. 
but they can be kind of crib sheets, um, little uh, guides, um, a podcast, um, some kind of uh, audio guide for, for to, so people can learn while they're doing other things. Um, they could be little courses. Uh, so there's a lot of other stuff that you can do um, to generate revenue and to also generate trust that doesn't just involve setting up uh, a shop on eBay, for instance. Products. Um, so there's an interesting thing about products is that they all, you know, selling products always involves some kind of cost in terms of um, storage, so sourcing merchandise and deliveries, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, I'm, I'm less expert, less, less expert in selling products online, but the thing I, I, I do understand is that um, you're you're essentially holding stock, and so you have to buy stuff, and so there's a there's a lot of upfront cost, and unless you, like I said before, unless you know that there's a demand, there's a risk that you're going to spend a lot of money upfront. So what I'd like to show in this part of the the webinar is just how you can start selling products without investing too much money in stock, and how you can use the idea of creating products also as a way of generating interest um, and connection with what you're doing. And then the finally th final thing is you can sell events. Uh, and yes, it's selling events in this day and age is incredibly challenging, if not impossible, but there are online events that can be done. Uh, and while it may be a step too far for some of you at the moment, uh, I'm also guessing that, that some of you already done some kind of Zoom webinar or Zoom call or hosted things online. I think the next step or shift is understanding where is the value in that webinar and what could you do to start generating revenue from sharing those experiences. So um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the tools that we've used in the Happy Startup School um, to share uh, and sell our knowledge. So this platform here is called Teachable. Uh, it's a paid for platform, but it's one of these platforms that are out there. There's another one called Thinkific um, and various others that I won't um, overwhelm you with. But again, the principle here, they are ready made for you to be able to essentially create uh, a curriculum, short or long, that allows you to uh, basically help people do the things they need to do without you being in front of them. Uh, one of the ways of thinking about creating courses is what is it that you tell people on a day-to-day -day, or you train people to do on a day-to-day -day, or you consult with people to do on a day-to-day -day, that you could easily just write down as a list of things that they do and then read and then action on. Because if you can do that, if you can turn something that you do on a regular basis into a process, then there's a potential for it to be a course. And if it's something that solves a problem or helps someone do something faster or easier, then there's a potential for, the, for you to sell that. And so I um, while I don't advocate you jumping straight into something like Teachable, I just wanted to sell you the possibility or show you the possibility that if you're able to productize a process, if you're able to break something down into a sim uh, set of simple steps, then there's potential for you to sell that. And that for, be, for that to be fuel and energy for the community mission um, and help you, help you fund, particularly if you're a bricks and mortar uh, organization, help you fund yourself during these tough times where revenue has reduced uh, because you can't get people through the door. Another tool that um, I wanted to share with you that we used at the very early stage of um, our Happy Startup School journey is Gumroad. Um, I share with you because it's a really quick way. If you have like a, if you can build like a guide, you know, like a two pager guide that will help someone. And, and I'm going to use the edible garden um, example again. Apologies if this is a. Uh, doesn't feel exactly um, aligned, but my assumption is uh, there are steps to help people and you know learn about what they can grow at different times of year, for instance. 
if you could create a guide that could step someone through that process of what to grow, when to grow it, how to grow it, and sell that as a nine pound guide, seven pound guide, 15 pound guide, however you want to price it, make it once, have it on your website that you can then share um, with uh, with people who, who just discover you. Um, maybe they don't know exactly everything that you do, but they see something of value, then they buy it. They learn more about your work and how you do it. And that's going to take them on another step towards trusting you more. Think of products, not just as revenue generators, thinking of products as small things that you can share that are of, uh, of uh, small but useful value. Um, using a tool like Gumroad helps you do that quickly and effectively without having to invest too much money in a massive platform. You know, the caveat is you won't make a lot of money with this, but what you'll do is you'll learn what works for you and what works for the um, audience you're trying to sell to and the things that they want to they want to buy. So the other aspect around selling, particularly for the first time, is you're going to be experimenting with ideas, experimenting with products, experimenting with things that you enjoy doing. And so don't get too caught up at the beginning with, oh, how much can I actually generate this month and next month? It's like, first, use it as a process of learning what works for you and what works for your audience. Uh, and try not get to get too obsessed with the money too quickly. Learning the tools and learning what, what's needed is, is much more important. The other tool I wanted to share with you is um, uh, this uh, Patreon. Um, I don't know if any of you heard about it, but it's it's usually used for artists, for people who who essentially want to create. They don't want to necessarily sell specific products. They just are looking for people to support them. And it's a, it's a great way to just start a subscription aspect to your business. So an example of how I've seen this used is people create podcasts where they share their knowledge, share their stories, and they ask their listeners to support the creation of that podcast and the uh, other work that they do through a, a platform like Patreon. So Patreon allows you to create subscription, um, uh, a subscription uh, model or subscription revenue where people can pay a monthly fee or subscribe to a monthly fee, a direct, uh, well, not even direct, but it's, it's just comes out of your card, or your credit card monthly. Uh, and it's it's kind of a vote of confidence and a vote of support for your work. And so it doesn't mean you have to sell something specific and direct. You can say, um, we're going through a challenging time. You, you need to tell your story. And again, I'll talk to, talk to that later. Um, please support us. Use our Patreon page. Uh, and it's just another way of thinking about how to generate revenues through these challenging times that isn't immediately about selling something you know, or selling a product or selling a service directly. It's about um, harvesting support getting people who love what you do and want to make sure that you still stay there and then providing uh, value to them in meaning and connection and not just through a transaction of products and services. Um, the other thing I wanted to share with you is this uh, platform here called Spreadshirt. And the the reason I wanted to share with you is that, like it's a, it's a very cheap way for you to sell products because all you need is a brand a logo a message and then they have templates for designing t-shirts mugs hats bags all sorts of things and then you create your own shop and so you can point people without having to hold stock without having to deal with shipping without having to deal with a lot of the things that are involved with um, selling products you can quickly and easily, if you have an idea, if you, you've got a, um, an initiative or a community business that you want support for, you can maybe employ the, ideally employ the, or get someone who has design skills to help you um, or in, in, invest a little bit of money in, in, in a designer and then create little products. Now, um, what this will do is, A, I would help you test what people would love to buy from you. But also, um, it's a great way of generating awareness for your work. You know, we have so many people who see this happy is, is the new rich t-shirt around because people have bought it because they want to feel connected. 
people have bought it not because, oh my God, I need a new t-shirt. They want to buy it because they want to feel part of what you do. So again, it's thinking about uh, selling differently, not because it's going to generate lots of money, but it's also going to generate lots of awareness. And it's also a commitment. When someone pays you money for something, it's a commitment to your cause. And so it's their way of contributing to what you're doing. And so thinking of it in that way, as well as thinking of, oh, is it a good enough t-shirt or is it a good enough mug? And then the final thing I want to talk to you about in terms of selling things differently is, is selling this idea of events and experiences. Now, we, um, uh, before uh, COVID, would run a monthly meetup called Ideas Cafe. Yeah, this was a way for us to support uh, local entrepreneurs and freelancers and founders um, with mastermind groups to help them go through challenging times in their business or answer questions in their business. And it was um, something that was really um, engaging. People in, came away from the, um, the event always energized and inspired, and then COVID happened. And so we had to shift this whole event online. I've, this event is free, but I think if you're providing a valuable service and providing a place where people are actually solving their problems, and if you have a strong enough story and mission, then you can get people to contribute to having this event take place. The value you're providing is connection. The value you're providing is contribution. The value you're providing is potential answers to their questions or challenges. Uh, and if that's a value and, and they value the work that you're doing, then it sh I don't believe it is uh, uncalled for to charge or to ask for money, for ask for contributions. So you can use um, platforms like Meetup or Eventbrite to, to start get gatherings, whether they are small gatherings of six um, or larger virtual gatherings where you can start building community, but also giving people space for contribution. So that's um, that section on selling something different or differently. The final, and I would say the most important thing is to be able to tell stories that inspire and connect. What you wanna do is give people a reason to buy something from you or to join your community or to come to an event. Um, to do it in a way that doesn't feel bland, that doesn't feel um, disconnected in terms of too far away from their lived experience. Um, to help them not only connect with the business, but to connect with you as a person trying to make this happen. And the challenge we face with the world this day, these days of overwhelming social media, overwhelming bad news, lots of input, is that we're so busy and so wrapped up with our own challenges that, yeah, we, we it's hard for us to take notice of things because there's so much, so much uh, input. And that can feel disheartening. But the other way to look at this as well is that it gives you permission to try things and fail because as well as nobody cares, nobody cares. <laughs> so if you do something and it doesn't work, then it's fine. You know, there's a likely that maybe a lot of people didn't see it. So you can try something new. But in the end, what you're trying to do, like I said at the beginning, is to find a small group of people who do care. And if they care, they will buy and they will spend money, they will invest time. But it isn't necessarily the thing that you're creating that they're going to buy. And it isn't just the mission and the outcome that they're just investing in. They're also investing in your why. They're connecting to your why. They're um, spending their time and money and energy because your why is similar to their why. But unless you're able to describe what you believe in, your personal values, what motivates you, what started you on this journey in the first place, then all it becomes is just a, um, a set of values or, or a, a brand statement on a website that doesn't really land well. People connect to people. And so that's something that I wanted to just kind of finish off on really. Um, and kind of on the line with the story of the Happy Startup School. 
So this is myself and Lawrence. Um, this is on one of our retreats in the French Alps. Um, we take, oh, we used to take people out every year, a group of entrepreneurs, 21 of us, um, to the French Alps to basically spend time disconnected from the day-to-day -day so that we can think differently about the projects, the works, the businesses, the initiatives that we were doing and be able to powerfully make changes. As those events, and I do hope they come back, were amazing and beautiful and, and wonderful and seem unattainable. Um, and to us, they were when we first sort of started out. Myself and Lawrence have known each other since primary school. We grew up in West London, Greenford. Uh, if you don't know where Greenford is, there's a place called Ealing. We're kind of on the periphery of Ealing. Um, normal, average, everyday suburban boys uh, bungling along uh, until we met each other. Uh, well, we stayed in contact, but we found ourselves in the same industry, um, the web design industry. Uh, both dissatisfied with the agents who we're working with, thinking that we could do things better ourselves. And so we decided to, to create our own agency. I was a, a programmer, developer, a technical architect. I knew a lot about the tech side of building sites. Lawrence was a designer. He knew how to make things look great, how to create great user experiences. And together we thought we could do things better than the businesses we were in. And so we started our agency, Spook Studio. And we grew it to a size of six, a little boutique agency in Brighton. We've got a lovely little studio uh, by the sea and everything was rosy. And then it was like, what next? Now the story of most agency businesses, service-based businesses is to grow the business as you grow the headcount. The trouble is when you grow the headcount, you have more salaries to pay. You have to find more work in order to keep the premises open. You end up feeding the beast. And as a uh, creative uh, founders, it wasn't something that we really wanted to do. And we didn't feel that that was the path of success for us, but we were surrounded by so many successful agencies buying their own premises, having international offices. We kind of felt alone and separated and kind of stupid. Like, are we really cut out for building a business? Because what we were trying to do was actually just do what we loved with people we enjoyed working with in an environment that made us happy and feeling like they were making an impact. And ultimately, we weren't optimizing for profits. We were optimizing for happiness. We were surrounded by this world, uh, this world of cutthroat business, of dominate the market, of basically um, be the best and uh, squash the competition. We wanted to live in this world where actually we were being our best selves, enjoying our work, feeling like we were making, or like I said at the beginning, effortless impact. By doing the stuff that we love doing, we were able to help others and to connect with others who wanted to support us and feeling this sense of community and connection and collaboration. And so it was less about thinking of in terms of B2B and B2C but thinking about human to human, how can we connect with other people? And so we're this agency thinking, oh, we can't build a business in this way because we don't want to be managers. We don't want to have a massive, the massive burden of trying to feed so many mouths and doing work that doesn't inspire us because all we're going to be doing is just chasing the money. So we put together our happy festo. This was our manifesto for building a happy startup. And we put it out to the world. We kind of thought, okay, maybe we're not the only crazies. We're not sure. We just put our hearts on our sleeves and share that with people and see what happens. And we create a little website where people could add their, uh, show their, add their face to show support. And within the first six months of launching that, little web page we um connected with and had more impact than we ever did 10 years as 10 years as a web design agency and i believe that was because we connected with people at a heart level at a meaning level not at a transactional level we didn't know what products we were creating we had no idea what we were going to do with that in terms of making money but we had a lot of people who resonated with how we felt and so we started doing little workshops, just talking about happiness and business. 
we started uh, doing little events and just talking to people and finding out what they were struggling with and what the challenges were. And over time, we started uh, um, doing an online course, uh, just talking about how to build a business online that's based on happiness. We started our own first festival called a Happy Startup Summer Camp. We then started doing retreats. Uh, and then we thought, actually, we need to bring these people together. We started to try to build community um, seriously in terms of having a platform. Like I said, we started with Facebook groups and we went to a product called Slack and then we started using Mighty Networks. But the principle being actually along the way, we were collecting friends, not building a customer base and finding people who resonated what we're doing and learning from them about what it does what motivated them and how to do things differently while they learned from us and so it was very much about starting with you then starting with who you can help because when you can start with your your story and what's important to you and what motivates you then it becomes less effortful connecting with the right people because they come to you because they hear about you and they resonate with your story and this is where it comes to this idea of public narrative and the i think the guy who started the who, who originated his, his name is marshall gantz he actually i think contributed or, or influenced barack obama's first pres presidential campaign and the principles are story of self story of us story of now story of self being communicating what are your values what is the journey that you've been on up until now and what is it that you would like to change not only for the world but for yourself why is that important to you and really embracing that story and living that story and then with that sharing that with people communicating what you're about so that other people can get on board, so other people can connect with your story. The way we did that was with the Happy Festo. We created a manifesto and we put it up online and we would share it with anyone and everyone that we met to just see if anyone resonated. And then seeing who comes out of the woodwork, who puts their hands up and engaging with them, and then telling that story of us, telling us, okay, we're here what can we what is it that's important to us as a group getting people to share their own stories and connecting their own experiences to yours so that you get that sense of connection that sense of not being alone and then the final thing is story of now and essentially transforming and channeling that energy into action that can be done now and one of the things that we talk about a lot in our programs and our community is think big, start small. I think we all have very big missions and chain impact, you know, large impact that we want to create in the world. And trouble with that is while it's needed and it's purposeful, it can feel overwhelming. So not only for yourself, but also for the people that you want to rally around you, you need to think about what are all the small actions that we can create now? What are the small steps that we can do? You know, create that first t-shirt on Spreadshirt. Launch your first podcast. Um, run a little webinar. Um, create a little ebook or um, guide that you can share with people that will help someone in that Story of Us group. Because when you can do that, and when you can tell this story, you can create this energy, which is encapsulated by uh, this quote from Seth Godin. People like us do things like this. And I love this quote, because it's not meant to be exclusionary. It's not meant to be, okay, only my people are here. It's an invitation. It's saying, I'm like this. Are you like us? Because if you like us, we do this. And being clear about the thing that you're going to do and why it's important to you. And so that for me is a really you know, fundamental to all of this is how can you tell that story that engage and invites people to connect and buy from you. And I accept that 
a lot of this is very high level. Um, it's very much at the inspiration and motivation level, I'd say. Uh, and I, I'm hoping some of you are feeling that energy. If you are, please uh, say something in the chat so I don't feel like I'm totally gone off tangent. <laughs> But for those of you who want something a bit more concrete and solid, um, these are this is a, a strategy and then a process that um, is quite common in the online world. But I think it's worth spelling out to uh, to see if it is useful for you, and that could be some simple first steps. Um, so the first thing is uh, attracting attention. And given that advertising costs a lot of money and giving, given that we can't necessarily meet lots of people, social media is going to be the easiest place to start attracting attention. Now, the challenge with that is, oh, which channel do I use? Do I use Instagram? Do I use Facebook? Do I use Snapchat? Do I use WhatsApp? Oh, not WhatsApp. Do I use Face, um, LinkedIn? All these different platforms. I think the best advice that has been given to me is pick one and pick one that you have energy to engage in that feeds whatever needs for creativity or connection that you have and just work on that for a period of time and don't worry about how much engagement you get or don't worry about whether you're building a massive following you're learn if you haven't done social media before you're just learning the tool and you're learning to tell your story and i might i'll share a couple of a tool that could help you do that in a fun and creative way if you if you don't know any tools yourself now the step next step is like raising awareness knowing people knowing what you do is and how do you get people to like the stuff that you do how do you people do you start building this relationship and i usually um what we have we have a blog post a blog um a blog and we have a website and we have a podcast you don't have to have all three. You can even just have one. If you love speaking, if you love sharing your thoughts, you can create a podcast and I'll share a tool in a bit about um, that helps you, makes it easier for you to do that. Um, I'm sure most of you have at least a website. Um, you know, if you can tweak that landing page into a story that that follows that, uh, um, that communicates your values and the mission and but also tells it in a vulnerable way, in the way, in that whole public narrative way. That's a, a great step. A blog is also useful. It's just a way to just share your thoughts and ideas. Think of it less as something that um, you need to be perfect straight away. Think of it even as a journal. Think about the story, telling the story of what's going on for you at the moment in the community business. Once you've got them there, um, ideally what you want to do is keep them informed and keep them connected and that's where growing a mailing list can be really useful because when they sign up to a mailing list what they're doing is again showing a sign of commitment and they're telling you please get back to me please let me know what you're up to and so that gives you permission to write maybe a blog post and put on your website but then to send it to people as an email and to keep them informed and to keep them connected to what you're doing and to share other stories of what's going on and to tell them about any events and products and uh, ideas that you have. Again, making them part of your story uh, through a mailing list. This next step on this, which I feel is even more powerful, is then building a community. So with a mailing list, it's very much broadcast. You're telling people about your stuff, about your story. If you can get them onto a community platform like Facebook, maybe it's only WhatsApp, maybe it's as grand as Mighty Networks or something bigger, but you give them then a platform to tell their stories, to share their challenges, to offer their contribution and their help and their skills. That's when it starts getting powerful. And I think when you have people who are in now that trust, stroke, love stage of the journey, then I think you'll be more comfortable to sell. You'll be more comfortable to share things that are going to help them or invitations for them to contribute to the mission that you're on and the work that you need to do. And so this is the simple but not necessarily easy strategy of taking people on a journey to knowing more about your work. Um, I'm going to share a little tool 
for now rather than go straight into lots of different tools uh, for mailing lists um you know the one that we use is is called mailchimp but um mailchimp also offer this other tool called tiny letter and it's a really simple tool it's very stripped down it's a sign up form and a way for you to create emails that you then send out to people so it's a very simple easy mailing list platform that you can get started with basically today the only thing that's stopping you is what's your story um so i'm going to pause now uh, and i'm going to open it up for some questions and i will stop my i'll try and stop my slides So we've just got your backdrop there, Carlos. Um, yeah, I think you're gonna backdrop. you're gonna have to close my if you I don't know if you can close my slides from your end because um, I can I, do. I was just gonna say that uh, if we are gonna move into questions now, is just to remind everybody um, that if you don't want to be, we will uh, keep the keep recording in case people may want to listen back to that. But just to remind you to turn your video off if you don't want your face to be recorded. Um, so just a, just a note, but if you have got questions, do feel free to put them in the chat or um, let yourself be known. Cool. Yeah, you may need help to help me with um, just stopping the presentation. For some sure. reason, my screen shares stopped me to... There we go, ah, there stopped. We go. Ah. Okay, so we have a question question here from Paulette about uh, they use Mailchimp but don't really like it. Um, can we export our mailing list to Tiny Letter easily enough? Um, I'm going to have to get back to you on that. I'm not sure how easy it is. To, I I believe it must be possible to import a newsletter list into Tiny Tiny Letters. The you know Tiny Letters is built by Mailchimp, so I'd be very surprised if you can't do it. But I can, I'd need to look into that and get back to you on that. Sorry, Paulette. There's another actually tool that uh, that I wanted to share as well. If you're interested in migrating away from Mailchimp, it's called Substack. And uh, let's see if I can get the URL for you. Uh, I've only learned about it this last week. Actually, the nice thing about Substack, or the interesting thing about Substack, is then you it, it turns into potentially a paid newsletter platform so people can subscribe to you and pay a subscription to receive your newsletter so it can then be an interesting way to generate revenue so um worth looking into if, if that's uh, if you're mo moving away from mailchimp anyway right um i see carol has asked what social media hub do you recommend so we can share across multiple platforms um the one we use is buffer I know there's a lot of others, probably more expensive ones out there, but um, Buffer is the one that we use. Uh, I can share the, well, do you, do you, I'll share the URL for those of you who um, want to see what the website is. Ah, thank you very much, Lucy. Brilliant. Um, there you can share to LinkedIn, Facebook, up until I think the end of the month, Instagram. I'm not sure. I think they, I saw something around. They're not going to stop being able to publish to Instagram, but it's definitely. Oh yeah, Lucy says it's a great time saver. So the thing, I, a thing about social media that I've learned, it's one of the things. Like when you think, oh my god, I'm going to be on social media every bloody day, and I have to post something. What you can do. Well, there's simple steps that I've been told to do. And I'm going to tell you, but I've never done myself because I'm really lazy. So I'm caveat. <laughs> but it is what you're supposed to do is um, firstly, have a uh, think of some themes. Yeah. So for instance, over a year, you've got 12 themes. What themes would you like to talk about? So for instance, edible gardens, it could be easily each theme is like the different foods that you could plant each time of the month or the things that you need to do at that time of the month. So that's your theme. And then you have a, a kind of a focus on each month, right? The types of content that you can create. Maybe it's weekly, maybe it's fortnightly. And then you just brainstorm the month before all the things that you'd love to create, the ideas you'd love to share, the 
pictures and images you'd like to create. And I'll show you this um, tool called Canva, if some of you haven't heard before, that's really useful for creating little pretty images. And then you can queue them all up on a thing called Buffer. And so have basically a week's or a month's worth of social media sharing queued up automatically and it will just go up every Monday or every Friday, whatever day you want. And so you maybe spend a day queuing up a whole month or even three months worth of social media sharing and then just let it run and it'll do it for you. And so that's a great way of then spending your time on what's really necessary, which is essentially engaging with people and answering questions and talking to them. A lot of people think social media is about just shouting. The best thing about social media is about engaging and finding people who do similar things to you or uh, are, have things, do stuff that's inspiring you and talking to them and reaching out to them. So um, <clears throat> that's, um, that's something that I would like to recommend. Um, yeah, and then Canva is a really useful tool. They, um, for one of the paid versions, you can get access to like stock imagery free, you know, that whole trouble. You know, one thing about um, social media that's, that's, that will help people engage is, is having some really nice imagery. Um, and that's the thing that attracts attention. Unfortunately, we're all little magpies attracted to shiny little things. So using a product like Canva can make it easy for you to design something that, that looks nice and they have lots of templates as well. So I'd definitely recommend looking into that. Um, I've got another question here from Paulette. We have just started taking our community onto Trello. Oh, interesting. But want uh, to better connect them. I'm now wondering if Mighty Networks would be better. If it is the case of scale, of guessing my text is when you are in the hundreds and thousands. Um, okay, so this is a question of uh, is Mighty Networks uh, a worth a worth looking into um, if you got on the order of hundreds or thousands of members? Yes, I, you know, even if you got twenty members or ten members, Mighty Networks I think is worth looking into. It's free. There's a community member platform uh, level that's free to to with. Um, to, for people to use so um trello i'm i'm not sure if i understood you correctly but i'm just curious about using something like trello to build community i've never seen that before but i can see how it could be done to do that but i would prefer you know i would go with whatsapp if anything but if you wanted to do something a bit more engaging than mighty networks thing about mighty networks as well allows you to create events it allows you to create courses it allows you to create smaller groups subgroups there's a lot of functionality in there that allows you to play with stuff to again deliver more value and connect people um and it has an integrated payment system so people can also you can generate income through mighty networks as a as a a subscription service uh, and that's what we use to we have over 150 members and they're paying about 30 pounds a month so um it's it can be very um useful um oh uh yeah lucy shared unsplash great source of um uh, high quality imagery um that you don't have to pay for though it's nice to acknowledge the people who made the photos right um I think we're coming to the end of time, end of time, <laughs> the end of time for this webinar, not quite end of days yet. Uh, yeah, is there, is there any other questions? Uh, and if they're not, um, I would love to hear how you're feeling right now. Remembering what you wrote before <laughs> about how you like to feel, uh, please type into the chat how you're feeling right now, because um i you know it's a nice ego boost for me um and there'll be a nice sense of contribution or feeling that i've made a contribution but also i would don't want to pressure you to give me the five star rating if you're still fe if you're feeling confused uh bewildered or like um totally flat please say that as well because that will give me a good good understanding or oh, maybe i can approach you and you can tell me what it was that i didn't do well uh oh that's so nice okay so definite eight <laughs> excellent i hope you were a seven before and not a nine <laughs> um inspired and motivated thank you lots of tools lots of ideas i know uh, i hope you've been able to 
uh, jot those down and i understand there's a recording so you'll be able to catch up uh informed and inspired great karma lovely i'm glad someone's feeling karma um and more motivated uh nine brilliant nine inspired oh good i i don't think i'm going to do any more work now i feel like my i've i've won for the day i'll just go and play computer games on my son's computer i think i think that's a i think that we can call that one a success then carlos um brilliant excellent so, uh, my, my life feels validated <laughs> uh okay so um, i'm gonna say uh just a few words uh, just to say thanks very much um and, and wrap up uh from everybody so um i found that extremely helpful thanks carlos and there's a few points that you you wrote down that i guess i just want to i just want to note back as a, as a as a way to summarize um uh, one of the key things you said is about collecting friends not a customer base and i felt that that really summarized the heart of this session of actually um you know we're here as uh, community businesses and so it's really important to, to do your business in a way that actually has got real heart and soul in it and I, so i really liked the way that you kind of encapsulated that phrase but the other thing that you said that caught me was don't get obsessed with the money which at the moment uh, might be very challenging because obviously many organizations are quite financially stretched but just really thinking about um, building those long-term relationships and not always chasing every pound but thinking about how you develop um, relationships and a business on the back of um, of that community uh, so really really helpful um, and also the point around regularity of contacts and creating rituals as a way to kind of anchor um, that community I thought was um, was extremely helpful so um, I just want to say thanks very much um, and uh, I don't know if you have any uh, final words you want to say Carlos before we wrap up um no I'm, I'm, I'm grateful again uh, grateful for the lovely comments I'm really appreciative of that uh, grateful for the time to spend with you thank you very much Lucy for inviting me to do this I I, um, I think for me the most important thing around all of this work, my work, anyone's work, is tapping into our needs and these core needs that we have personally for the things that we do. And when we're more aware of those things and know, actually, this is where we get energy. So I have a real strong need for contribution, uh, connection, uh, and impact. And when those three needs are met, then I have more energy to do the work. And even if the money isn't flowing, I'll still continue and I'll still push through because I know that's the thing that motivates and drives me. And so... I believe when we're able to connect to those needs ourselves and we know that's okay, that's where I get my energy from, it will help us push through even when we're finding challenging times and it's things aren't working the way we want them to work. It's just being having that self-awareness, I think really, really helps and so much other stuff that the goodness that comes from that as well. well fantastic. Um, thanks very much. Um, so I'm going to... Um, uh, just uh, wrap up there then and then say uh, thanks very much uh, to Carlos. Um, there's a couple of things uh, I just want to show you before we do that quickly, which is uh, just to tell you where you can find out about uh, Carlos's his work. Uh, so you can uh, see uh, the work of, oh sorry, uh, that's the wrong thing. Um, you can see the work of the Happy uh, Startup Company at uh, thehappystartupschool.com um, and then you can also find um, Carlos on Meetup. So they have a very active Meetup group. So if you look on uh, Meetup for Happy Startups, uh, you'll find him there as well. So the, the recording will be up on the website um, within the next couple of days. But just a big thanks, everyone, to your uh, for your participation. Um, and I wish you a very happy Wednesday. So thanks very much, everyone.